The Yudu River in Ganzhou, Jiangxi Province. When the Communist Party of China led the main force of the Red Army to begin the long march in October 1934, this was the first river they had to cross. In the afternoon of May the 20th, 2019, Xi Jinping visited a monument to the start of the long march here and presented a floral tribute. A few days after his return from Jiangxi, Xi Jinping attended a meeting in Beijing. At it, he launched a new campaign, remaining true to the party's original aspirations and keeping its mission firmly in mind. As a major initiative for boosting party building in the new era, it represented an ideological renewal designed to return the party to its original aspirations, temper its character, and set it on the path of a new mission. Socialism with Chinese characteristics has been the basis of all party theory and practice since the launch of the reform and opening up. Establishing it has been a fundamental achievement made by the party and the people through numerous hardships and at enormous cost. In the work report of the 19th Party Congress, it is stated that the defining feature of socialism with Chinese characteristics is the leadership of the CPC. The greatest the strength of the system of socialism with Chinese characteristics is the leadership of the CPC. This statement explains the dialectical relationship between the cause and the program. China's great struggle, great program, great cause and great dream are closely intertwined and affect one another. The most decisive among them is the great new program of party construction. Its goal is to ensure that the party is always at the forefront of the era in a world that is undergoing profound change. The program also sets out to make the party society's backbone in a historic process that's fraught with risks and challenges at home and abroad. And it aims to ensure that the party remains the strong core of leadership in the historic process of adhering to and developing socialism with Chinese characteristics. that history can teach the present. The Communist Party of the Soviet Union, when it came to power, had only 200,000 members. By the time it was able to resist the fascist invasion from Germany, it had two million. 
But after 74 years, when it had reached 20 million members, the party and the country collapsed. Why did that happen? Without doubt, the main reason was the loss of the advanced nature and purity that distinguish a proletarian ruling party. And this, in turn, robbed it of the power to lead, unify, and fight. The party guides everything, everywhere. Itself, the government, the army, the people, and academia. In the north, east, south, west, and center. Its ideology is its soul. But only when its thinking is unified can it unify its will and action and advance. Xi Jinping's thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era is rooted in China and is firmly in step with the times. It embodies the will and actual demands of the people. It is a fundamental ideological success and a major political achievement of the great practice and struggle carried out by the people under the party's leadership since its 18th National Congress. When the flag is held high, it indicates the way forward, the path to be taken, and the lines to be followed. It's the source of strength, the guiding light, and the confidence that steadies people in the struggle of the new era. The CPC has been in existence for 98 years and in power for 70. It has grown from a small group of founding idealists into the world's biggest political party, with more than 90 million members and 4.6 million grassroots organizations. In the new era, this Marxist party is tasked with the glorious mission of ruling a great nation of nearly 1.4 billion people. But in the course of its development, the need to strengthen its internal discipline has also grown. Party The party is key to managing the affairs of China. Strengthening party discipline is a major self-revolution. For many years, party building faced challenges in four principal areas. The fact of being in power, the reform and opening up, the market economy, and the external environment. It also faced four potential dangers, the loss of vitality, insufficient capacity, alienation from the people, and rampant corruption. Having the courage to engage in self-revolution simultaneously with the social revolution is a distinct quality and major advantage of the CPC. This is what sets it apart from other governing parties. After the 18th Party Congress, the CPC Central Committee, with Xi Jinping as its core, included strict party governance in the four-pronged comprehensive strategy. This strategy covers political, ideological, organizational, and work style construction. By reshaping its image and remolding its spirit, the party has imbued itself with fresh vitality and strength. The CPC's 19th National Congress, in setting out the tasks for party building in the new era, made it clear that in every aspect, it must be guided by political construction. In December 2018, a meeting of the Politburo addressed the issue of democratic life. It emphasized that the entire party should undertake a resolute struggle against behavior that undermined political discipline and violated the party's rules. In January 2019, the document, Opinions of the CPC Central Committee on Strengthening Political Construction Within the Party, was issued, establishing guidelines for furthering strict party governance. 
there is ample evidence to show that if a party has internal problems, at their root is inadequate political construction and a lax and unhealthy political life. The illegal construction of villas in the Qingling Mountains that was revealed in July 2018 is a classic example of this. The Qingling Mountains separate northern and southern China and shield the ecosystem in the Guangzhou Plains area. Over several years, illegally constructed villas had been appearing among the mountain's northern foothills, built by people who treated what was a national park as their own backyard. The damage to the local ecosystem was enormous. The Central Committee, and Xi Jinping personally, had demanded an end to the construction several times. However, the local party committee and government went through the motions without seriously tackling the issue. Eventually, the Central Committee sent a work team to sort the situation out. Of the 1,194 villas under the jurisdiction of the city of Xi'an, 1,185 were demolished. The other nine were confiscated. A number of party cadres were placed under investigation for breaches of party discipline and the law. The party's work style determines its image. It influences its popular support and affects the very basis of its existence. Its work style has a greater impact on the people than anything else the party does. A poor work style also elicits the strongest reactions. Following the CPC's 18th National Congress, developing its work style became a key element of party building. Twenty days after the Congress, on December the 4th, 2012, Xi Jinping presided over a meeting of the Politburo. It adopted the eight-point regulations of the Politburo on improving work styles and maintaining close ties with the people. Amounting to just a few hundred words, the document changed China and impacted the world. <笑>太晚你们了 in leading by example, Xi Jinping has visited the grassroots across the country, from remote mountain communities to factory floors and border posts. He always travels light. In inspecting the situation on the ground, he focuses on achieving real results. He has been widely praised by party members and the people for the example he sets. The entire party was mobilized in the effort to implement the eight-point regulations. Spending was cut on international travel, 
cars and accommodation, gift buying and banquets at public expense. Progress was also made in eliminating immoral activities and improving the party's work style. Poor work styles that had developed over the course of many years were eradicated through an intensive internal effort. After the 18th CPC National Congress, education was conducted, focusing on a number of issues including the mass line, the three stricts and two earnests, the two studies, one action, and staying true to our founding mission. Across the country, campaigns were launched to correct thinking. Party members were tempered through studying, which helped them to purify, renew, and improve themselves. The social poison that is corruption was the greatest threat to the party. In correcting work styles, the party launched a major campaign against corruption. The CPC, as China's ruling party, confronts problems head-on when they are exposed. To stop corruption from spreading, every corrupt element had to be eliminated. No one could be exempted and no tolerance could be shown. After the 18th CPC National Congress, the Central Committee opened cases on more than 500 provincial level officials, senior military personnel and officials of the organization department of the CPC and prosecuted Zhou Yongkang, Guo Xilai, Guo Bo Xiong, Xu Zai Ho, Sun Zheng Zai, Ling Jihua and others for serious violations of discipline and the law. The persistence with which the CPC investigated and punished officials showed the clear attitude and determination of the Central Committee to enforce discipline, strictly govern the party and root out corruption. It also showed that the party had the courage and political will to swallow strong medicine. It would use the country's laws and regulations to restore order and was prepared to sever any limb if it was found to be diseased. 近日，按照中央统一部署，中央第八巡视组进驻了国家中央第七巡视组先后来到海关总署和国家旅游局召开巡视。中央第四巡视。Inspections are a key part of the party's internal oversight. They combine the theory and the practice of strictly governing the party and encourage systemic innovation. Following the 18th CPC National Congress, Xi Jinping personally ordered new inspections. This lent them fresh vitality and authority and made them a powerful tool for governing the party. More than 60% of the leads in cases investigated by the 18th CCDI were obtained through inspections. In 2014, central inspection teams visited the Liaoning province in the northeast. There, they discovered a number of irregularities in elections to the Provincial Party Committee, Provincial People's Congress, and National People's Congress. Out of the province's 102 elected representatives to the National People's Congress, 45 had been chosen through vote rigging. Out of 616 delegates to the Provincial People's Congress, 523 were guilty of accepting cash or other gifts, while 116 other people had acted as intermediaries in offering bribes. The number of cadres involved and the severity of their crimes caused widespread consternation.
，因为我支持你腐败，进不了诱惑了。我不是也也拿了别人的东西吗？来找我呀，我呃，我愿意，呃，我愿意当人大代表，你帮我说一说吧，啊，我再辛辛苦苦你说一说吧。When even the top leader in the province undermined, rather than protected, the sanctity of elections, the consequences were inevitably serious. Those who hadn't been involved in rigging votes when they realized what was going on began to fear they'd lose their position if they didn't participate. In this way, the behavior spread. In September 2016, in an unprecedented move, the 23rd meeting of the 12th Standing Committee of the National People's Congress annulled the election of several delegates from Liaoning. The alarm had been sounded and the knives were out. Through a total of 12 rounds beginning in May 2013, inspections for the first time covered the entire party within a single term of the Central Committee. The reality shows that inspections are a powerful tool for the state and party, and an effective means of self-supervision. Strict internal governance is a long-term objective for the party in its overall construction. The party constitution is the document regulating the CPC overall. Xi Jinping has stressed that party members should study the constitution carefully, so as to understand it and follow it strictly. Doing so on a regular basis is a fundamental aspect of party building and the duty and responsibility of every party member. Heroes and model workers are the bright stars in the history of the CPC's struggles. Today, a number of party members have, through their devotion, shown what it means to be a hero in the new era of socialism with Chinese characteristics. One person who has, through his actions, shown his devotion to the party and the people's cause is 95-year-old Zhang Fuqing. He epitomizes the spirit and nobility of a CPC member. Zhang is a former soldier from the Northwest Field Army. His unit, number six company of the second battalion of the 718th Regiment under the 359th Brigade, suffered heavy casualties during the War of Liberation. He was awarded the PLA's Order of Merit first class three times. He also received a special award from the Northwestern Field Army and was twice given the title of military hero. When he was demobilized in 1955, Zhang asked to be sent to Laifang, an impoverished county in a remote and mountainous part of Hubei province. There he has spent his life helping the local people. Even his children were unaware of his outstanding conduct over the past 60 years. His impressive record was only discovered when information on demobilized soldiers was being collected in late 2018. Zhang 
Xi Jinping in praising Zhang Fuqing emphasized that his actions were particularly impressive because he had kept a low profile, stuck to his original intention, and never allowed his basic qualities to change. In the army, he had defended the country, and in the countryside, he had helped his fellow people. His life was extraordinary because he had remained pure and indifferent to fame. This made him a role model for all demobilized soldiers. The spirit of devotion he had displayed should be promoted with the aim of uniting the people as one in the new era. The party's strength stems from its organization. The leadership of the party and all its work rely on its strong system of organization. At the National Conference on Organizational Work held in Beijing in July 2018, Xi Jinping stressed the importance of focusing on the development of the party's organizational system. He said that cadres should be fostered who are loyal to the party and possess moral integrity and a keen sense of responsibility. Following the 18th CPC National Congress, departments at every level worked hard to implement new standards for the selection of cadres. In doing so, they adhered strictly to the instructions contained in a number of key documents, which dealt with matters ranging from preventing cadres with bad habits from being promoted and enforcing the regulations for electing and appointing party and government leaders, to managing the promotion and demotion of leading cadres and encouraging a sense of responsibility and better conduct among them. This greater oversight further strengthened the ability of the party to act as a gatekeeper. It corrected several prominent issues, such as cadres being elected solely based on local GDP or their age. County committees are the party's frontline command post. In early 2015, more than 200 county committee secretaries participated in a training course at the Central Party School. Xi Jinping held informal discussions with the students who were touched by the concern he showed for them and the trust he placed in them. Improving discipline is a fundamental strategy for strictly governing the party. The CPC ensures that observance of its discipline and regulations becomes the behavioral norm for party organizations and members at every level. Systemic construction is the fundamental strategy for managing and strengthening the party. Xi Jinping has stated that to strictly govern the party, we must rely on education and the system. One being soft and the other tough, they should work to exert a force in the same direction at the same time. Yao 18th CPC National Congress, the party's internal regulations have undergone steady improvement, and the Central Committee has adopted more than 90 new ones. These relate to clean government, discipline and punishment, accountability, political life and internal supervision. Together, these new additions account for around half of the party's 170 current regulations. Chungo 
实践充分证明，中国共产党能够带领人民进行伟大的社会革命，也能够进行伟大的自我革命。我们要永葆蓬勃朝气，永远做人民公仆、时代先锋、民族脊梁。